Can that be our prayer this morning? Uh, we fix our eyes on you. You are beautiful, Lord God. So beautiful, Lord God. We are so in love with you, Lord. You're beautiful, God. So beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. God, we worship your name. We bless you, God. Oh, God. God, we worship you. Father, we come before you this morning, grateful, Lord, grateful for the privilege of God of being in your presence, grateful that you look upon us, Lord, hallelujah, grateful that you are our Holy Father, hallelujah, you are our closest friend, God. You are most beautiful, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Grateful God that your face is toward us today, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, thank you that it's not toward us because we've been so uh, blameless and spotless, but because the blood of your son Jesus has cleansed us from our sins, God, you can look upon us and, and we can come into your presence. God, we can lift up our holy hands without wrath or doubt, Lord, hallelujah. We can come confidently into the presence of the beauty beautiful one. God, not afraid to be consumed by your holiness, God, but we we can rejoice in all that you are. We can draw from all that you are, and we thank you for that today. Thank you that your name is a strong tower and your presence is a safe place, Lord. Thank you that you have provided refuge for our souls, oh God. You have provided refreshing for our weariness, oh God. God, you, oh God, have been our glory and the lifter of our heads, God. You have been our song in the night, oh God, and all that we have need of, you have been faithful to supply. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time and this space of gathering, this time to be together, Lord God, separate but together and in your presence. We thank you for that. We ask that you would speak to us, oh God. Hallelujah. Th that you would speak to us, God, for your words are always timely, God. Your, your words always hit the target, Lord God. Your, your words always accomplish your will and your purpose in the lives of your people. And more than anything else, that is what we desire. And so we ask that you would speak to us today. In Jesus' name, we pray. We thank you now as we ask these things, counting them done according to our faith. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.
and amen. God bless you all and thank you so much for rejoining us here uh, on our New and Living Way Sunday morning uh, worship stream. Amen. Um, our scripture this morning is coming from the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 16, Psalm number 16. And uh, this is actually the lectionary scripture, but it is so timely and appropriate for where we find ourselves today and where we find ourselves these days. Psalm 16, thank God for our uh, team that has gotten us this new platform so we can have everything available. You can see it throughout. We appreciate that. But Psalm 16, I'm reading from the New Living Translation and starting in the first verse. And the scripture says, keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you for refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my master. Every good thing I have comes from you. Can anybody on here say that today? God, you are my master. Every good thing I have comes from you, Lord have mercy. The godly people in the land are my true heroes. I take pleasure in them. Troubles multiply for those who chase after other gods. I will not partake in their sacrifices of blood or even speak the names of their gods. Lord, you alone are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You guard all that is mine. The land you have given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. Amen. The last verse says, no wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. If you haven't done so already, we want to encourage you to share this, to start a watch party. I'm going to be asking y'all to comment and talk back to me as we're moving through the word today. But I want to talk about PPE today. I want to talk about PPE this morning. We know that there's so much discussion all day, every day about PPE, about personal protective equipment. And we know that we're usually talking about those who are on the front lines in terms of our healthcare workers that are being exposed on a daily basis uh, to this COVID-19 virus. And the concern is that they need to have the PPE that they need so that they can be effective despite the threats that may be around them. And I want you all to know that whether you work in the healthcare industry or not, you need PPE in this day, in this day and in these times. And so I'm talking this morning about PPE. We don't know what the danger is that the psalmist, who we believe is David, uh, who wrote Psalm 16, we don't know what the danger is that he is exposed to. We don't know precisely what occasioned the pinning of these words here in Psalm 16. It may be that he was up against a physical danger. It may be that he was up against a spiritual danger. But when you kind of read and track his life, uh, given the things that he experienced and kind of the flow of his life, it's really more likely that he was up against a physical danger that had the potential for developing into a spiritual danger. It's likely that it was a physical danger that had the potential for developing into a spiritual danger. And it's very clear from this scripture and from this passage that it is a very clear and a very present danger because he repeatedly addresses this issue of safety. He says, keep me safe. He says, I come to you for refuge. He says, you guard 
all that is mine. He says, I will not be shaken. He says, my body rests in safety. Clearly, if he said it that many times in just those few verses, clearly the writer has somewhat of a preoccupation with being kept safe. Can anybody with dry hands from washing your hands 150 times a day identify with the psalmist and his preoccupation with being kept safe? The thing that is so interesting though about danger is that danger has a tendency to reveal what we really trust in. I'm not talking about what we say we trust in, but I'm talking about what we really trust in. Oftentimes when we find ourselves in a place of danger or a place of threat or uncertainty, those are the moments that we can really get real clear about what it is, listen to this, that we worship what it is that we worship. What is it that we reach for in the middle of the night? Come on, when we can't sleep because our anxious thoughts are racing and we are dealing with all of the what ifs and what ifs and what is. What is it that we reach for to give us solace in the middle of the night? What is it that we reach for when we've gotten some bad news or when we've experienced a major disappointment or a major devastation? It doesn't matter what you say you worship or what we say It doesn't even matter that that's what your rhetoric is. The question is not about what your rhetoric is, what you're saying, but what are you reaching for in the time of trouble? Because what we're reaching for in a time of trouble is a better indicator of what we worship than simply what we say. The reality is that sometimes our rhetoric about God does not match our reputation with God. We have a lot of wonderful things to say and churchy and religious things to say. And that, that is all our rhetoric about God. But God knows the truth about us. God knows the truth that when we get in trouble, we don't reach for him. We reach for our bank account. Come on. We reach for our ability to make more money because we think that the money is going to deliver us. When we get in trouble, we reach for the opinion of people. And before we even pray and ask God what we should do, we done called all of our friends and posted and seen what kind of feedback we can get on social media because that's really what we trust in. God knows the truth about what we worship. And I believe that in this season, what we worship is really being revealed for what it is. The psalmist says, keep me safe, O oh God, because in my time of danger, I am reaching for you. I am reaching for you. I want, I want us to look at what this psalmist has to say. Because I believe that in these few verses, he gives us some indications of what his personal protective equipment really is. He gives us three things that I want to point out. And I want to encourage us to consider whether we have that personal protective equipment as well. The first thing he says is that he the first of his uh, 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 of his PPE is godly influence. If somebody write in the note, godly influence, godly influence godly influence, godly influences, godly influences, godly influences. He says, the godly people in the land are my true heroes. I take pleasure in them. Listen to his words. Troubles multiply for those who chase after other gods. And he says, basically, I'm not about to be a part of that. What is he saying? He said, first of all, when I find myself in this place of danger, I'm not about to make bad matters worse by over identifying with the wrong people. Come on, I know we're in the house and we're socially isolated and some of us may be lonely and missing the connection that comes from being physically in community. But let the psalmist words warn you that this is not the moment to make, Lord God, bad matters worse by over identifying with the wrong people. Here is the truth. The truth of the matter is that there are some 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 ungodly people who have some really interesting ideas. You, you ever got caught in it? 
you, you ever got caught because you saw a really interesting headline or or there was something about a conversation that was attractive to you and you got drawn into something that wasn't what you stood for but it was really interesting come on we need some godly influences in this season we will come into contact with people who have some ungodly who are ungodly but have some very compelling ideas and the psalmist warns us about this come on new and living way y'all remember our scripture memorization who has psalm one i think elder patrick has psalm one psalm one speaks about it psalm one says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful watch the progression y'all know the rest of it but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law does he meditate day and night and he shall be we're not going to do the whole thing right here right now but y'all know it or y'all can look it up but look at this progression i want you to see this i want you to see this look at the progression sometimes we are walking with people just because it's interesting so we're just kind of casually hanging out we're just kind of uh, uh of loosely hanging out and loosely associating with them but the scripture doesn't just talk about walking with watch the progression they're they're, they're talking about walking with them because it's interesting then standing with them maybe because it's convenient and then you end up sitting with them because it has gotten comfortable i need you to hear me be careful about what you get comfortable with in this season get be careful about what kinds of conversations you allow yourself to participate in be careful about what you let who you let speak to you and who you let speak into you i know after this service you can go to 40 others be careful in this season about what you allow access to your way of thinking and what you allow to access your spirit be careful watch who you are getting comfortable with because the reality is that in these times it is too dangerous come on to be under ungodly influence the psalmist says that the first thing that he's checking for in his ppe is godly influences there are some people y'all we need to unfollow in real life like for real we need to unfollow them on social media and then we need to just unfollow them i need somebody right now because i feel this in my spirit there's some folks in your phone book in your in your contacts list that you know you don't need to be in contact with anymore ever until maybe perhaps you see them in heaven and around the throne you could just give them a quick head nod and keep going you need to take this opportunity to take those people out of your list Get them out your contact list. And listen, let me help you because I almost got tripped up like this. I'm confessing to the people of God because there were folks that I took out of my contact list, but they were still in my iMessenger. So when I opened my computer, they were still there. Take them out your phone and take them out your iMessenger as well. Yes, yeah, Sister Valerie, Valerie Shaw, drop the, drop the dead weight. Drop the dead. There are some people that we need to disconnect with and unfollow in real life. I know things have slowed down and you are not moving how you used to be moving and, and maybe things seem so out of whack, but this is not the time to lose ground. You have prayed and fasted and God has delivered you from some people and some people from you. God has delivered some situations from you and you from some situations this is not the time to lose ground this is the time where you need the right people around you you need people listen whose thinking is not disqualified by their living some people have some beautiful thoughts but some disgusting lies and according to the scripture their disgusting lies disqualify their beautiful thoughts this is not the time this is not the time to be hooked up with folks that are going to hinder you more than they are going to help you. Can, can I tell y'all a little story right quick? She's probably on here and I don't want to embarrass Dr. Anisha Walker. But back when she was Anisha Kwan and we were students at the College of New Jersey, I, I, had, I had seen uh, subconsciously but not really made the powerful conscious decision to guard my connections. Uh, and realize how important that was until this interaction that I had with Sister Anisha. Uh, she was, uh, I think, a year or two or is a year or two younger than me. And, and, and I, so in school, you know, I was a year or two ahead of her. And she said, um, uh, I was in the process of applying to graduate school and the whole thing was a faith walk. 
I took my GREs and I didn't even know what a GRE score was. I couldn't, a good GRE score was. I couldn't afford the class. So I bought the book. I scraped up the $40 and bought the book and made some flashcards and studied. I applied to one school because that's what I could afford to apply to. And that's what I heard God said. I didn't even know it was an Ivy League school and it was crazy to only apply to one school. The whole entire thing was a faith walk. I was walking by faith that I was going to get in. I was walking by faith that I was going to be able to afford to go. I was walking by faith that I was going to have somewhere to live and I was going to have a job. But one day my faith got a little wobbly. Anybody know what that's like when your faith gets a little wobbly? And I remember I was walking across campus and I stopped in her room and I sat down in her room and she was asking me what's wrong. And I said, I don't think I'm going to do it. I said, I think I'm going to take a break. I don't think I'm going to graduate school. Now, mind you, I had been testifying before I got into the school. I was testifying that God was going to open the door. Before anything ever happened, I was declaring what the Lord was going to do. But I don't know what was going on. But in this moment, I was weak. Listen to what I'm saying. I was weak and wobbly in my faith. And I said to Sister Anisha, who was the little sister, and I'm the big sister, so I'm supposed to be the one having the, the stern sayings because I'm the big sister and she's the little sister. I said to her, I think, you know, things are just not coming together. I don't have a job. I got into the program, but I don't have a job and I need to work and I, I don't have a place to stay. I don't know how I'm going to afford an apartment. I don't know how I'm going to afford to move because I just don't have what I need. So I said, I think maybe I'm just going to take some time off and work for for a little while and revisit graduate school later. And Sister Anisha, the little sister, rose up and said, that's not what we're believing God for. Lord have mercy, Jesus. What, what's my point in sharing all that? Sometimes in route to our destiny, our vehicle stalls. Come on, some of y'all had an old car. You know something about a vehicle stalling. You know something about getting in and having to pray every time you start it up. Sometimes in route to our destiny, our vehicle stalls, but you need to be connected with people who not only have some jumper cables, but got a good battery and can help you get back on the road. Come on, your first piece of protection protective equipment of personal protective equipment is godly influences Come on, some people who are going to snatch you back. Some people who are going to call you on yourself. Some people who are going to say you're doing the most right now. Some people who are going to say you're doing the least right now. You don't need to be on the phone talking with your unsaved friend. Come on, that's reckless with her mouth and letting her tell you what you need to say to your husband. You need some godly influences. Some folks that are going to say, sis, have you prayed? Have you fasted? What are you doing? How are you involved? You need some godly influences. And I believe that in the midst of this danger, God is going to reveal who were godly influences and who were just un who were just influences. The first piece of your PPE, godly influences, godly influences. Second piece of the psalmist's PPE is inheritance. I need you to get this. This is so good. This is so good. This, this, this blessed me because I, I, like I like the Old Testament a lot. <laughs> I like the New Testament too, but I like the Old Testament. Listen to what he says. The psalmist said, Lord, you alone are my inheritance and my cup of blessing. You alone are my inheritance and my cup of blessing. You need to understand this context. Inheritance is an extremely important concept in the Old Testament. It's extremely important. The firstborn, as I'm sure you've heard, if you've been in church before, was legally entitled to a double portion of the father's inheritance. The, the leveret laws were the laws that required a man to marry his brother's widow so that the family's inheritance would be protected. In other words, if Sheila was married to Bob and Bob died, if Bob had a brother, the brother had to marry Sheila so that their family and their property could stay in the land and the inheritance would be protected. Thanks to the daughters of Zelophehad, the, the five ladies, young ladies whose father died and they had no brother and they said, Moses, listen, we know how the law is set up, but we don't have a brother to receive 
our inheritance. We shouldn't be out here destitute just because we don't have a brother. Can we get them property deeds? So thanks to the daughter of daughters of Zelophehad, the inheritance of a man who died having no sons could be transferred to his daughters. And if he had no daughters, it would be transferred to his brother. And if he had no brother, it would be transferred to his nearest relative. Because inheritance was so important, if someone sold his land for financial reasons, if a, another relative was able to redeem it so that the land or the inheritance could be kept in the family. It was so important that even if nobody in the family, like you ain't got no money, your mom ain't got no money, your uncles, your cousins, don't nobody have no money. Even if nobody in the family was able to redeem the property or to purchase the property, it would, uh, it could be returned or it was to be returned to the family in the year of Jubilee. I'm just laying all this out for you to help you understand that this is how important inheritance was in the Old Testament culture. Inheritance was a way of being connected to the nation. It was a way of having security and it was a way of having a place. So all of the tribes, when they entered into the promised land, were given a part of the inheritance. They were given a parcel of land that was broken down into family clans, into families, so that everybody would have an inheritance. Everybody, that is, except for the Levites. The Levites, the scripture tells us, were not supposed to have an inheritance. Every other tribe was given a portion of land. But as for the Levites, the scripture says, don't give them any property for the Lord is their inheritance. What exactly does that mean, Overseer Shannon? In other words, what it meant was that as long as the Levites were faithful to serve God, God would be faithful to meet the needs of the Levites. For the rest of the tribes, their security was attached to what they had. Their security was attached to having a good job. Their security was attached to having a strong 401k. Their security was attached to their, their stock portfolio uh, uh, performing well. But for the Levites, they were given specific instructions that their security was not to be attached to what they had. Their security was to be attached to who they served. And David says that the second piece of my PPE is that the Lord is my inheritance. I am protected even if I don't have all of the things I would like to have to provide me security. I am protected as long as I am serving you. Can I just talk to somebody that's looking at their coins and trying to figure out how we're going to make it work? I want to let you know that the Lord is your inheritance. As long as you continue serving God, not only will he give you what you need, but he will guard what he gave you. Lord have mercy. I, I know some people are, are, are kind of reconsidering this tithing thing and reconsidering this offering thing. And why do I need to give anyway? Because they're not even in the church. We're not even in a building. The tithe was never about the building. The tithe was always about your heart and my heart towards God. Will we serve him first and trust that in serving him first, he will make sure that we have everything else that we me. The psalmist says that not only do I have the PPE of godly influences, but I also have the PPE of inheritance. As long as I have the Lord as my inheritance. The Levites were responsible to, for ministering before the Lord. They were responsible, come on, to help in the sacrifice. They were responsible in the worship. They, they were responsible before God. Hallelujah. I need to help somebody. How do I serve a God who needs nothing? What does it look like to serve God in this season? What does it look like to serve God in this place? Because for some of us, serving God has become so attached to serving in the church that we don't even realize 
realize that serving in the church is just one way to serve God. Even if you serve in 25 ministries in the church, it's just one way to serve God. How do we serve God that needs nothing by serving our sisters and brothers? Come on. I, I, I'm, I'm secure. Come on. My protective equipment is that I have served people that I have come on given to the poor. The scripture says that he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord and the Lord shall repay. My protective, personal protective equipment is that my inheritance is the Lord. I might not have the cash flow that I used to have, but my inheritance is the Lord. My stock portfolio, Lord knows it ain't performing. I ain't even opening the envelope because it's performing so badly, but my inheritance is the Lord. I'm protected. And not only will God give me what I need, this part right here, bless me, he will guard what he gives me. Somebody ought to be grateful that not only does God give you what you need, but he also guards what he gives you. There's one more part. The first piece of his PPE is godly influences. The second piece of his PPE is that his inheritance is of the Lord. But the third part of his PPE is presence. The third part of his PPE is presence. Listen to the words of the psalmist. The psalmist says, we're in uh, a Psalm uh, 16 for those who are joining us late. He says, I will bless the The Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. Hear it. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. Somebody write it in there. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. Write it so you can get it in your spirit. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. Somebody say, I'll catch you on the replay. You're not going to catch you on the replay. You Just write it so you can catch it in your spirit. Catch it in your spirit. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. Here's the thing. It does not help me to know that God is loving it does not help me to know that God is all knowing. It doesn't help me to know mm -hmm. if God is remote. I see we having some connection issue, but I'm, a, I'm just going to keep saying it to make sure everybody got it. It doesn't help me to know that God is loving or that He is powerful or that he is all knowing if God is remote. I need you to catch it. I know we're doing church remotely. We're educating our children remotely. We're having family gatherings remotely. We're celebrating birthdays remotely. We're grieving remotely. We're working remotely. But what I need you to understand is that God never works remotely. God never works remotely. In fact, one of the things that distinguish the God distinguishes the God of Israel from the gods of the other nations is that their God is near. The gods of the other nations, the gods of the Philistines, the, the Baals and the Shemoshes and all the other lowercase g gods were those who said, come and make your way here to me. You come to me. But the thing about the God of Israel is that the God of Israel said then and still says now, here I am presenting myself 
to you. Lord have mercy. Deuteronomy 4 and 7 says it this way. For what great nation has a God as near to them as the Lord our God is near to us whenever we call on him? What great nation has a God as near to them as the Lord our God is near to us whenever we call on him? Here is the thing. You and I benefit from the character and the nature of God because he is willing to be present with us. He is not just willing to be present when things are good. He is not just willing to be present when we are pleasant. He is not just willing to be pleasant on present on the sunshiny days. We have a God that is with us and willing to be with us in good times and in bad times, in times of plenty and in times of lack, in times of clarity and in times of uncertainty. We have a God who is with us. And so the psalmist said, the third thing that I have protected me, I have godly influences. I have the inheritance. My inheritance is the Lord. Lord, but I also have the presence of God. I have a God that does not work remotely, but a God who is right here in the midst of this with me. God is with me and his presence is protection. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I go a little bit further, just a little bit further with that? I'm a how person. So, so I usually want to know how, like, like how and how how and then how. And so I was was thinking about about this thing of God's presence being protection. God's presence being protection. I know it to be true because I've experienced it over and over and over again. But how is it that God's presence is protection? And I came across this quote. It it put it all right into into focus for me. It's a Spurgeon quote that says, nearness to God brings likeness to God. The more you see God, the more of God will be seen in you. I'll say it again. Nearness to God brings likeness to God. The more you see God, the more of God will be seen in you. In other words, the more I am in his presence, the more his characteristics and his nature rubs off on me. Come on. Y'all know people that hang out together because they use the same terms and they use the same phrases. We even know people that go to the same churches because they got the same shout. There's, there's something about their shout that that's similar because they've been in each other's presence. And so their ways, their, their characteristics, their way of moving, their way of speaking has begun to rub off on each other. And I believe that that is exactly how the presence of God protects us. The more I am in his presence, the more his characteristics rub off on me. So if I'm finding myself in need of a little bit more patience these days, if I spend time in his presence, the God who is long suffering, his characteristics began to rub off on me. And I find myself more patient with my kids in their homework, which is schoolwork, which is homework, which is schoolwork. Come on. The more I find myself in his presence, what I need to, to operate begins to rub off on me, if I find myself in need of love, the more I spend time in the presence of love, love begins to rub off on me. And I find it easier to love on that unlovable person in my life. If I find myself in need of strength, if I get into the presence of the God who is strong, can I talk to anybody who ever felt like they were about to give out completely, got in the presence of God and came out ready to fight? It's because you were in the presence of strength. And after you were in the presence of strength, strength rubbed off on you. If you're in the presence of God and in need of joy, joy will rub off on you. His presence, his presence protects us because his presence gives us what we need. I need to talk to somebody who's been feeling like they don't have what they need to function. Get in his presence, get in his presence, get in his presence. 
get in his presence. I know, I know you've been on Facebook and trying to figure out what other people are doing and you've been Googling it and, and reading articles and, and calling friends and seeing what they're doing because you're trying to figure out how you can function in your space. But let me tell you something, there is nothing like getting in the presence of God and letting that strength that is in God rub off on you. Getting in the presence of God and letting that peace that is in God rub off on you. Get in his presence. Um, it said, I have godly influences as my PPE. I have an inheritance of the Lord that is my PPE. And I have the presence of God that is my PPE. So if we have all of this PPE, all of this personal protective gear, what is it that we are being protected from? What is it that we are being protective, protected against? I want to say this to you all, and I want you to hear me with your whole heart. We will not faint. We will not faint. We are being protected against fainting collapsing, giving up, giving out, losing our hope, revoking our promise. Come on. What are we being protected against? We are being protected against fainting. I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I want you to know that we are protecting against the idea that there is nothing that we can do, that nothing matters, that nothing can help us. We are protecting against the idea that we, do you understand that that's what the enemy always wants us to believe, that God won't be good? He always wants us to believe God won't be good. So go do it your way. God won't be good. So go work it out on your own. God, God won't be good. So abandon what you know in order to pursue, in order to pursue what you think. We are putting on our godly influence. We are putting on the Lord as our inheritance. And we are putting on the presence of God because we will not faint. I make that declaration in the name of the Lord Jesus that we will not faint. No wonder my heart is glad, the psalmist says. After saying all that, he didn't say the danger has passed. Notice he never says that the danger has passed. He never says that the danger is over. But he starts talking about gladness and rejoicing <laughs> right in the midst of the danger. I'm going to put on godly influence, influences. I'm going to put on the Lord as my inheritance. I'm going to put on the presence of God. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. I need you to know today that gladness, rejoicing, and safety are not then, are not when we can get out the house. But there is gladness, there is rejoicing, and there is safety available to us even now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, put on your PPE. Amen and amen. We're turning over to our Elder Barrington to minister to us. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. Just to know the 
rest upon his promise just to know the sense the Lord is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the says the Lord Jesus, Jesus how I trust him how I prove him more and more Jesus, Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust in more Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more so you can say it is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know thus says the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I prove him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for the grace to trust in more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for the grace to trust in more. Yet 
remaining in our heart. Thank you because you have been good, you have been kind in your mercy for forever. Lord, as we come before you this afternoon, God, we pray that you work with stick in God. We pray that we to draw near to you and trust you for protection. We pray that we would not use our own God to fight and our protection, oh God. We pray that we would not use our for you even as we are uh, coming to you, God. But we pray that you would guide, that you would lead, that you would direct, oh God. We come against the weight of the world that you want to try to choke the world, oh God. We pray that we would trust you for strength, that we would trust you for protection, that we would indeed 
We trust you for all that we need, oh God. We pray that where fear may try to step in, oh God, that it will be in the oh God, and then we will fall into our closer to you. Lord, we pray that we will not distance ourselves from you or try to serve you openly, but that you for this time we will continue to be within your presence, oh God. We thank you for your peace to save us. We thank you for your peace to comfort us. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the glory. Thank you, pray. Hallelujah. Ooh, thank you, Lord. We thank you all so much. Hallelujah. Elder Barry, you keep playing. That's all right with me. <laughs> we appreciate your presence here with us for our live worship stream this morning. And as you can see, giving information is available here. If you'd like to give, you may do do so through Cash App, uh, our cash tag. Or you can check in out of the world. The Lord God will not be the And we will not be the And we will not be the glory. We love you too, Sister Valerie. God bless you. Bless you, Brother AJ. The after church reading, y'all. I'm at the door right now. I'm shaking y'all hands. God bless you, Pastor Antonio. God bless you, Lee family. Thank you to Minister Tina. Thank you to Elder Barry. Uh, thank you to Elio, who's in the background. <laughs> Congratulations to you and your husband. I look forward to meeting him one way or another, even if it's through video chat. We can do that. We can do that. Amen. God bless you all. The blessing of the Lord rest upon you and have a glorious day.